Awesome, 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 and we are live. Welcome back, welcome back. Yes, we are here. Welcome, 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 kings and queens. Welcome back. Super excited that you're here. Luani Hughes, CEO of Great Gale, the mangaka of Bold Saga, Afrofuturism manga for the culture, by the culture. And I'm super excited, wanted to talk to you today. This is going to be an amazing topic, and I'm just excited that you're here. Today, we are going to talk about something really important to me that I believe can really be helpful for you going forward into this year, next year, and so on and so forth. So I'll just give everyone a chance just to join the live. And in the meantime, yes, Dream Rider Original, thank you so much for joining. Yes, super excited. Welcome, welcome, King. How was your day? How was everyone's day? How was your Wednesday? Did you have fun? Did you get to do what you got to do? Did you get your, all your goals accomplished? Hello to you too. I'm just excited because of the fact of what we're talking about. Brand new Don, thank you for joining. Today, 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 we are talking about the power of self-publishing. The power of self-publishing, the power of self-publishing, as well as BCICF recap. Hey King, how was your day? Hope you had a phenomenal one. And I'm gonna give everyone else a chance to join in. And just to let everyone know just a little bit more about why this topic matters. Um, again, the power of self-publishing as well as the BCICF recap. So what is BCICF? And then we'll get to the self-publishing. Well, BCICF is the BAM, Boston in Comics Color Festival. And I had the honor of being an, an exhibitor. Selflix Studios, thank you so much for joining, King. Oh my gosh, look, look, look. This, this is an event you have. Look, if you're on the East Coast, please come. Next time when they have the event, please come through. I went to the event. I was, um, honestly, it was thanks to Calvin from um, Icarus Metro. Almost finished my 12-hour shift. This is a nice way to end it. Great. Super excited. This is going to be an amazing topic, man. Amazing topic. Um, Boston Comics and Color Festival in this event that this is, what, their third year, if I'm not mistaken? It is 2021-20. Yeah, their third year having it. And why I love this event so much, it literally feels like a family reunion when it comes to comics. And the reason why I'm saying this, I went to the event. It was a large, like, um, call again, basketball court that they had it in. So there's a lot of space in there. In addition to that, they had music playing in the background. Not like okay music, like, like popping music, like current music. What was it? Oh, my. There were so many different songs. It was like a combination from, like, they went from, like, dance hall. They heard Elephant Man. Then there was, like, hip hop. Then they went back and forth with um, different vibes, um, old school hip hop, new school, all the different types of music, man. So that was amazing. Um, they had a fashion show. So that was cool. Never seen that before at a comic convention, um, cosplay convention. They had a violinist playing. So it was just, it was an amazing experience, man. You have, look, I'm telling you, no matter how much I enjoyed being online, talking to you kings and queens, one of the best things you can do is go out in person. I'm telling you, there's, not, there's nothing like meeting people in person and talking about what you love. To the point, I remember um, this millionaire had once said, you blow up offline before you blow up online. I know a lot of people, we want to get the tens of thousands of views and tens of thousands of followers and, you know, a million likes and a million followers and getting a giant fan base. But, but before you get there, don't forget about meeting people in person. Don't forget about actually meeting them in person, talking to them, getting to know them, meeting them going to events. And this is the power of self-publishing. It, it ties back to networking, but again, it's self-publishing. Because if I didn't finish a book and then get to two, three, and then ultimately chapter four, if I didn't finish these books, I wouldn't have been able to go to the event. So you don't know what is on the other side of you finishing your goal. I'm telling you, when you finish your goal, it creates so many opportunities for you. So um, another thing that I noticed when you go to events, choose to be premium value. I was able to even double the amount that I usually make at these events because of the fact I ended up investing more into the event. Because literally what you put in is what you get out. So if you put in the least amount, you will get out the least amount. But if you put in more premium value, you get out more premium value. We were smack dab in the center of the event when we were setting up, my wife and I. Great Gale with Bold Saga. Oh my gosh. There were so many, there were so many people that were coming to the table going back and forth. It was almost like, I don't know if you've ever been to Pathmark or Walmart or any type of event where there's a very long line 
and then people are going back to back to back to back to back. That's what it felt like. I, it was going so fast. I didn't get that opportunity to truly just get a whole bunch of photos of people. Um, I wanted to, but there was just so much going on. Um, I didn't get the chance to, but I'm looking forward to that next time. You, you've got to be there, man. Um, in addition, I met amazing creators. Icarus Metro was one. Um, Zero Snake was another. It's not every day I meet Black Mangaka. So getting his book Unrivaled was very cool. Like, check it out. Christian values, dope arts. It's not like, you know, the typical, you know, power system shown in battle style, but it's like martial arts, you know, Christian values. It's, what is it? I believe it's the journey to the West, if I'm not mistaken, but like with more of an Afro more of an Afrocentric theme. I just started reading. I read it before. I'm rereading it again because I met him from the BSP publishing app. So check out his book. It's called Unrivaled. Look at that name, Unrival. That, like, I'm telling you, and this ties back to the power of self-publishing because that is what happened at this weekend. We had a discussion about do-it-yourself publishing. When you choose the name of your book, you must choose a name that is powerful, a name that will stand the test of time. You don't want to just have a typical name or something that's average. If there already is Naruto, don't go with Naruto about a ninja with ten tails, but it's a slug instead of a fox. You know, since Bleach exists, don't make a manga called Clorox, you know, <laughs> or Wet Wipe. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, make something that's cool. Make something original. Make something that is you, authentically you. Because at the end of the day, when people buy into what it is that you're creating, they buy into you. Not anyone else. They buy into you and what you have to provide. So at the Do It Yourself publishing panel, it was amazing. Why was it so amazing? First of all, I've done a lot of online panels. I've had a lot. I've moderated a couple. I've been featured on a couple. But I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm literally telling you, don't do that, man. Make something that you're, that's so cool. Whatever. Thank you so much for joining, King. Look, man, the do-it-yourself publishing panel. I can't wait. When you see the replay, you see what I'm talking about. First panel in person I was on. I've watched so many. I remember going to Schomburg and asking questions just being in the audience, but now being able to help people in person. Oh my gosh. Phenomenal. It was, it was very humbling for me on the panel. I was on it as well as Icarus Metro, um, Kingswood comics. So that's David Cronson. In addition to that, it was Javier Cruz Winnick. Um, I forgot the name of his story off the top of my head. And the man at Schomburg years ago. I'm grateful for the fact that he's still going forward, man. Like, this is the perfect time to get into creating and learning and doing what it is with the power of self-publishing. Now, Brand New Dawn says, to be honest, bro, I have felt a little discouraged the last week. AI makes me feel like the past three years of growing in art is slightly for nothing. You know, I'm so excited that you brought up that topic because, again, this ties into the power of self-publishing. Just because someone is doing something faster doesn't mean they're doing it better. Better beats faster. Even though best known beats best, better known beats faster. Just because someone can create art quickly with a filter and just get it out there does not mean they can copyright it, does not mean that they're going to easily be able to trademark the name, does not mean that they're going to be able to own it. What does it matter to gain the world and lose everything? So what does it mean to just create all this AI artwork that you can't protect on all your merch, this, that, and the third, and you can get sued for it? You can lose out and have no creative control over it. And then you end up in a class action lawsuit or something else because Mid Journey and all these other companies are getting sued. People don't really like to talk about that. They'll be like, I love the AI, it's so fast. But at what point are you sacrificing speed for quality? So I would encourage you, King, don't be ashamed of the fact or depressed at the fact that AI is all over the place and getting you down. Look at the fact of you are USP. See, USP is a business term for unique um, selling proposition. It's the value that you bring to the marketplace. And when you create something of value, your value is going to determine the price that you charge on it. Because when something is truly valuable, you can charge a premium price. So you cannot charge premium price for AI art. Why? Because if someone knows the prompt that you did, then they don't need you. So what's going to happen is that more people AI art their way, they're self-selecting towards the bottom of the barrel. What do I mean? 
If you can pay five bucks, seven bucks, however much on a subscription to create quick, cheap art that has no value, that has no soul, you're not going to be able to charge anything meaningful for it. You're not going to be able to copyright it, so you cannot own it, which means even if you went to the copyright office, they literally just had the ruling on it. Zari of the Dawn, perfect example. People that want to go on Amazon and put up all their AI artwork get shut down by Amazon because they don't want to deal with the drama. They don't want... See, the business people know the truth. They know that this AI art thing is a nice fad, but it's going to keep people that are non-creative even lower. And then when the fees happen, Jessica, thank you so much for joining. When the fees happen, the copyright infringement is a real thing. We talk about it in the seven steps to creating your dream manga series. This book will literally change your life because it, it literally changed mine. It's how I created Bold Saga, chapter one, two, three, four. Don't let it get you down. Just because these people are doing art quickly doesn't mean that they're self-publishing. Doesn't mean that they're learning how to write properly. If you're chat GPTing and you're AI arting your way all the way through your book, you have no creative true control over it. You're just letting the machine do everything. Your imagination is not being used. And when we look at the values, the highest levels of value, this four, implementation, unification, communication, as well as imagination. See, imagination is the highest level of value. What do I mean by that? See, the highest level of value is when you think something and then you bring it into reality, that's where the wealth is. What do I mean by that? We all know how Steve Jobs did it. He was the creator, but he thought he wasn't just the person who was just coding and all these other stuff. He was the person who had all, the, all these amazing ideas and he would just think on a level that's just, Absurd Apostle, thank you so much for joining. It's just amazing. He would just think of these ideas and then he would do and he would create and he'd have all the other creative people do all the other work. So I'm telling you, kings and queens, you want to start to change the way that you provide value. Don't just think of being the hardest working artist. These AI art people are not going to get as far as they really think they are. You'll make some money here and there. That's nice and all, but like, what I want to talk about today is the power of self-publishing, how you can get into the five figure, five figure, six figure, seven figure, and beyond, and how do you properly do that. It's stuff even I'm implementing. been studying AI like crazy, a nice tool to have in the toolbox. I love the fact when people that are creative can use it as a tool, but at the end of the day, I do not fully trust it. At this present moment in time, it's just something that I don't trust because at the end of the day, Based on the fact that AI art is based on data laundering when they scoured the internet with the Lion um, database, the 5B database, when they just took all these photos and just put it together, copyrighted images as well. I don't want to be anywhere near it because it's the same thing like there was a filter back in the day. Years ago, people were so excited. They're like, oh my gosh, I love it. What happened? When they did the filter, it made your face look older. You probably heard the story already. Everyone wanted to see what they looked like when they were older. They said in the third, they wanted to check it out. Unknowingly, they didn't check the fine print. What the app was doing, it was taking in the metrics of a person's face, their bio data. So when people are so hyped up on using AI, these type of technologies that aren't proven just to get ahead without looking at the big picture and growing structurally, instead of just growing quickly, you're not going to get as far as you want to get. And if you're getting value from this live from this um, discussion, please check out all of our products at Great Gale. We got four books of Bold Saga, chapter one, two, three, and four. We have the seven steps to creating your dream manga series, as well as new products, such as this merch that we, this is the merch that we're showing off at the event. So literally it's this um, daybreaker or the dawnbreaker jacket. And it basically says, however long the night, the dawn will break. So there's that, we got shirts as well as books, like our audio book just released. We've got actually affirmational books, coloring books, all these amazing products, all these amazing things. So check it out. And if you want to support us as well, you can also go to PayPal. There we go as well. PayPal.com forward slash um, PayPal me, Great Gale. If you want to support, if you want to tip, if you want to provide any type of support as well. So you can check that out. So in addition to that, I want to get into the fact that self-publishing is your goal long-term if you want to create assets, because assets are 
way more important than liabilities. Assets help you win. I'll buy your seven steps book tomorrow. Thank you so much, King. And I will send you the link as well for it if I haven't sent it already. Um, mainly because when you think of self-publishing, what it literally means is that you're breaking the shackles of what was to create what can be. Because when you truly understand how to self-publish, you are activating your imagination and your communication. That's where the greatest levels of value are. But also you're creating assets that can pay you forever. When you pay, awesome, thank you so much, King. You're gonna love it. The Seven Stars book is business via manga. And it's literally showing you how you can own the entire thing, create and own. That's what you need to do. That's what we need to do more of as kings and queens. We need to own what we consume. We need to be prosumers, like 19 Key says, not just producers, but prosumers. So again, when you get to the point of creating a book, audiobook, PDF, ebook, print book, hardcover book, all these things are in the realm of self-publishing. And that's what I talked about on the panel because it was very humbling when um the moderator said, you know, the reason why we have you all here is because of the fact that we recognize you. AJ Artbricks, thank you so much for joining. No worries. I definitely, definitely share the live, let everyone know about it because we're going to be talking about the power of self-publishing. When I discuss self-publishing, I'm coming from the vein of this. Self-publishing liberates you to make what you love while getting paid exponentially. Exponentially. See, that's what I love. See, in nature, things don't grow incrementally now, one or two. Things in nature grow exponentially. And what happens is when you create and you take the imagination creative part out of it, you're taking away the exponential growth. You're going faster, but at what cost? Now, Selflick says it all depends. If you feed AI your own drawings, it could learn from it and reproduce your own art. You're faster. So I like the fact of what you're bringing up. And it is true that when you use um, AI, you could put in your own content and you could literally edit, enhance, and take out the menial labor of what it is that you're creating, which is great. Don't get me wrong. It's not the fact that I have a problem with AI completely as a whole. I have a problem with how it's being implemented right now. To the point, IBM literally says they're going to start laying off 7,800 jobs because they'll find AI to do it. And what's going to keep happening is every time you use AI, you're creating a slippery slope, which is affecting everything. Why? The more that you're feeding it at your own artwork does not mean that they can't take your artwork and reuse it for someone else. How many times have there been data leaks and data hacks? Like, I know that whenever you do anything creatively, inherently, there will be risk. But the more that you use it, the more it's going to be able to analyze your style. And then all that happens is someone goes in, they see that this style is very popular, and then they just sell it to other people. Next thing you have like the Disney style of art, and then that's being sold for however long until the copyright infringement happens, and then they get shut down, or the Marvel style of art. I know that Japan, they even have AI mangas and they have AI anime. At the end of the day, because people are, we are living an instant generation. People want things faster. But at the end of the day, there must be structure. That's how life works. Everything has structure. You don't plant the seed today and get the fruit today. That's not natural. That's literally not. Nothing is wrong with having systems and implementing strategies, you know, how you can penetrate the market strategically. That makes sense when you have an expert guiding you. That's strategy and tactics. But when you just have this mentality of, I'm just going to use a hack, a technology, or something else to get instant reward without doing any work that's not natural and in nature things go exponentially and when you self-publish you can get paid exponentially why i'll show you an example of how this works i have an idea for a book and then i can turn that idea into a manga right so this is the first option melanite comics thank you so much for joining first thing have an idea write it down so it's written and then it becomes a book. So that's the first asset, a book. Now we have the physical book, but I want to create it so that if you don't want the physical book and you live in a different part of the world, you want the ebook, you don't have to pay for shipping, create the ebook. That's the second asset. Okay, you have the book, you have the ebook, but you don't like to read because you're busy, you're driving. This, that, and the third, bam, have the audio book. 
That's three different assets. And all of those are assets that you can own and you can copyright and you can protect. With the AI advent of AI art, when you cannot copyright it, that means you cannot own it. So imagine you putting in all your work to go faster, make a million dollars you cannot own. Someone takes your style, redraws it in their own way, changes it, transforms it. Now they copyright it. Now you have nothing and they have everything. So that's what I'm getting at. When you self-publish and you think from a business perspective, you have to weigh the pros and the cons of, is it fast or is it productive? Like that's the bigger picture. Nothing is wrong with using AI to enhance things, right? That you've already created, right? That's, that's different. But when you try to create the entire thing off of AI, then you have a problem. This is why the Copyright Office has an issue because if you're just using AI to do all the work for you, all the legwork for you, it's the same thing like going a person hiring another artist to commission the work. You have nothing. You have nothing. So Chris Olin, thank you so much for joining. Um, Selflix, thank you so much for your input. Um, Brig Bro, that's what I do. I got a bunch of things written down on the Google Doc. Yeah, you got to write. Write the vision and make it plain. Start with something, write it down, and then get it done. And to help you on your journey to being a mangaka, we have this book, Seven Steps to Creating a Dream Manga Series. Why? Because when you have an asset, it changes everything. Literally, um, EYL literally says assets over liabilities, assets over liabilities. In addition, Master P said it's products outweigh talent. Because no matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you work at a job, all it takes is a, God forbid, mistake or something happens and then you can't go any further but if you have an asset though that asset can pay you forever look at the story of inky johnson i won't go into all in depth but to sum it up he had a goal and a dream to join the nfl finally got to the nfl life hit him knocked him down he can't pursue his dream anymore medically like he can't physically do it anymore but what he gets into public speaking then he becomes a powerful public speaker now he's got books podcasts all these amazing assets and things that he can do what you have to do is to get to the point where you create and self-publish because then you can exponentially create. Like because of the fact that, and the best part I love about self-publishing is once you understand how to do it once, you can do it forever. Like literally just this perfect example of what I'm talking about is just this past weekend. I literally released all these books on the same day. That is one, two, three, four, five, six books. So I'm a 12X published author. <laughs> Literally, in five years, and 12 books done. So coloring books. There's another asset you, that you can add onto your list, you know? Books that teach A to Z, you know? Affirmational books, audio books. You want to start to have a different approach. Because at the end of the day, if we're just being mangaka to be mangaka, we're just doing what the Japanese have done, and, which is nice, but you don't want to work yourself to Kuroshi. You want to think and use Kaizen 1% better every day. Again, 1% better. You don't got to be the best, period, every moment. I love what Eric Thomas says. I don't got to be the best. I'm a beast. Beast mode. That's it. Because innovation is rewarded, but execution is worship. Execution. So when you execute, when you finish the goal, that's how you change the narrative for you, for your family, for your life. Like I remember just being able to see so many young kings and queens see the book. I remember this little king he, he um, his parent showed him chapter two. He looked at it in his hand and he held the book close like it was gold, like it was literally gold and he didn't want to get let go to the point. Yes, respect him. I uh, love um, Dr. Eric Thomas. He's so cool. Um, But the, the young king didn't want to let go of chapter two. So his mother's like, you know what? Since he loves two, I'm going to get all of them. So that's the point, man. When you have all these assets and you can own them and then you can just put them out, in person, you're able to just generate more revenue. And then you can build up an email list. So another thing that you need to do, because too many times people get caught up in AI and they want to go faster, but you're missing on a business principles. Nothing is wrong with using technology, but don't let the technology use you. So what you should do, super hack. When you go to events, bring one of these, bring one of these. So what is this? This is an email list sign up form. People are given consent for you to join their email list. Why? The fortune is in the follow-up. You can sell as much as you want to and try and, you know, always be closing like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross said. But at the end of the day, you can only do but so much. Email list is the biggest thing ever. Facts. 
you have to have an email list because God forbid social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse, TikTok, Weekend Folk fan base shut down. God forbid one day, if you have a way to talk and go direct to consumer, that's how you win. That's how you win because you need a community. That's what I'm noticing. I'm looking at all the big people out there. Sean Cannell talking about this. So many other creators talking about this. 10 years ago, it used to be about having followers and subscribers. Nowadays, it's about community. It's about community. This is why I love talking to you, kings and queens, because I'm here to help you win. As a self-published author who's done it 12 times, we have to help each other win. Cooperative economics. Um, self Flick Studio says, email list is the biggest thing ever. Brand new Don said, ET um, preacher is my dude. Man, this is gold advice. See, not silver, not platinum, just gold. Love it. I don't under, I don't even know why it seems outdated. So you're saying you don't know why emails are the biggest thing ever, or you don't know why followers are the biggest thing ever? Just want to make sure I'm on the same wavelength. But we need to get to the point where we get a, what's the word? Thousand true fans. Miss Bernice, thank you so much for joining, Queen. Awesome. The email list allows you to share your message. Yes, it's so true. You need to find a way to communicate with your target audience. You need to. You need to. Like having an email list is such a blessing because you can start to build an audience of people who want to consistently hear about what it is that you have to say. And what they've said is in the book, um, not Expert Secrets, dot com secrets. Russell Brunson talks about the fact that as well as in Traffic Secrets. I believe he touches on it in each one. You need an email list because on average, every email can equal to $1. And in another book, you they talked about the fact that you need to have a thousand true fans. Get to the point where you have just a thousand people who believe in your message, who believe in what you're saying, believe in what you're talking about. Because um, Brand New Dawn's bringing this up. If you're a shadow band, or let's say, Things affect your algorithms, email can always count on. It's true. And what I like about email is you can move it from place to place. Like Instagram accounts have been shut down. Just last week, some ba bad mind almost tried to hack me, talking about how there's an issue with their account and blah, 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 blah. And what these people like to do is phishing. I was literally just watching my wife, um, Extraordinary Attorney Wu, and they talked about a phishing, a spear phishing attack. So it's like people are out here doing bad mindedness for God knows why. You need to be able to think long term. Think long term. So again, the power of self publishing is this you want to create assets. Because if you have an asset, right, you work once and then you're paid forever. That's why I love it. Every time I get paid on Bold Saga, I'm super excited. Why? Because I just made it once, one time. And now all that stuff that people has come up, yeah, I want chapter one. Bam. Okay, I want chapter two. Okay, great. Now I want chapter one, two, three. Awesome. Okay, now I got one, two, three, and four. Because that's what you need. You need to create an actual collection. And that's what I love. Thank you so much, um, Chris Olen. Keep winning, King. So the power of self-publishing. Get to the point where you're creating, you're creating, you're creating, and then you're finishing. So that's really important. And in addition to that, which we talked about in the panel as well, there will be challenges. There will be setbacks. People will do things, they will say things. No one performed against you shall prosper. The goal is to keep moving forward. Every time you feel exhausted, every time you feel tired on your road to self-publishing and creating your books, your um, products, check. you need to check back to why you started and write down the three people who you're doing it for. Think about them. So every time you get tired, you'll know who you're letting down and why you got to keep fighting for your dream. It's very important. In fact, there's some publishers on this um, live as well, like Miss Bernice. She's got books as well. So check out amazing authors, check out amazing creators, and become an amazing creator. Why? Because here's how big the self publishing industry is, according to wordsrated.com. So I'll actually share this so that you can see it as you're on YouTube on the replay. So let me just do present. All right, share screen window. All right. So on YouTube, this is what it looks like. So self-published books and author sales statistics. And the reason why I keep going back to books, books, books is because of this. Books are so important. Even God knew that he needed to be um, create books. The Bible, one of the highest selling books, if not the highest selling book of all time. That's how important it is to be an author. God is one. 
Become an author, kings and queens, become an author. Why? Story is the greatest catalyst for change and story allows you to resonate with people. Story is, you know, small enough that you can pick it up. And when stories have pictures in them, like coloring books, children's books, manga, they're helping to raise the literacy rate. Something black, something beautiful. Um, Kakeri, thank you so much for joining. Books are the key. Look at the fact that Amazon built its infrastructure starting with books. The Bible, a book. Last Kingdom, books. Game of Thrones, books. Naruto, book. Um, Bleach, book. All these different things are books. And even when you get into it, most, if not all, movies are screenwriters. That's writing. So then it's literally like a book. So getting into books is the way forward. That's what I truly believe. So according to wordsrated.com, this is how big the self-publishing um, industry is. 300 million, not, you know, thousand, not 300, you know, dollars, but 300 million self-published books are sold each year. And then look at that. You know, only 1% of audiobooks and Audible are self-published. Wow, that's crazy. 1.25 billion worth of self-published books is sold each year. So you know what that means, kings and queens? There's so many books out there. This is not competition because the goal is not to think of other people as competition unless you're in the red ocean. W. Chan Kim has a book about that called The Blue Ocean Strategy. Check it out. You need to get to the blue ocean. Get into a lane where you are the only person in that lane and just ride it out and keep going. Dominate that lane. So again, I've learned, I learned something every time I watch your life. Thank you so much, King. I'm here to provide value to help kings and queens win. And I'm, I'm just excited because too many times we have people who create books and they become self-published authors, but they don't provide enough value to help other people do it. Yes, I have a course on making manga, cover to cover, manga just live course for $1,500. But I also have the seven steps book to creating your dream manga series for $20. Because I know that sometimes when the hardest parts when you're starting out is the cost being completely transparent is the cost to get it done. The setup that I have today is not the setup that I had when Bold Saga started. I used whatever I had to the point I didn't have a standing table. I used to draw on, what's the thing? An ironing board. I used to put it on top of a table and stand up so I wouldn't have to bend over and end up with back pain, but I could stand straight up. I mean, it was bad because I didn't have support for my arms, but it was better than harming my back. So again, this book is literally, check it out, the seven steps, again, to creating your dream manga series for anyone that wants to become a self-published mangaka this is the book that you need because most people are not going to show you the game of how to create your manga protect your manga and sell your manga we do an author so this is how big the self-publishing industry is and again when you are a self-published creator and you self-publish you are accessing a gigantic pool of wealth here's another benefit of when you are a self-published author speaking engagements. I literally got offered the opportunity to speak and teach to kids about self-publishing. And I've done it. So I have proof. My evidence, my proof is my evidence. So there's so many opportunities that are available to you. And again, you can do it based off of one book and then two books and you have a series and you get well known for it. And as you keep going, even Russell Brunson said that one of the highest paid things or one of the highest goals he wanted to achieve that most entrepreneurs look for is a New York Times bestselling author, which if I'm not mistaken, is 30 to 40,000 books being sold in one week. So again, it's an author. It's literally an author. Movies are based on books. Manga is a book. Anime is based on books. Video games are based on books. Like at the One Piece, um, Kaizoku, um, Forgot the actual name, the Japanese word for Pirate Warrior 4. But that's literally based on the manga of One Piece. I mean, they added in some things here and there, but that's the power of self-publishing. Because when you self-publish, you are accessing wealth. And that's what I want to tell you, kings and queens. As the times are going more forward, as the advent of AI is going up, minimum wage is going to be eradicated soon. Jobs are going to be gone. You need a career. You need to have something that you're deployed to, not employed, but deployed to, deployed to your dream. I know that um, Dr. Miles Monroe talked about it. You have to be deployed to your work. You have to be deployed to your dream. So I want to let you know, kings and queens, work towards your goals, work towards your dreams. And whenever you're creating, I highly recommend getting into books. I highly recommend becoming a self-published author. 
And out of all the types of books to make, I highly recommend making manga, especially if you're into business, because this is, in my opinion, one of the greatest untapped opportunities of this generation. Why? You look at Zapier, their commercial is an anime. Animes are based on the manga style from, you know, legends of the past. You look at all these amazing comics that are outselling American comics. It's manga. So what you want to do, kings and queens, is use what is working in a generation to gain wealth in that generation. If you create a manga, you're literally, you're literally beyond anyone else in the space of just comics and books because of the fact that manga has such a broad appeal. When we look at the number one highest paid media franchise of all times, Pokemon, worth over 100 billion. That style is manga, even though it's anime and it's animation, that style comes from manga. You know, they have the books, the video game, all that stuff is tied back to it. So you have to really, and Hello Kitty, look at the art style. It's manga, it's chibi, 92 billion as of 2018, probably even more now, probably 96 or close to 100 billion as well. You want to look at the big picture and realize what is working, what is winning, how can I use that to win for me? So again, kings and queens, check out Seven Steps to Creating Your Dream Manga Series. Why? Because being an author can set you up for the rest of your life. You can get movies out of books. You can get more books out of books. You can literally get ebooks, audiobooks, coloring books, hardcover books. So that's what I'm talking about, exponentially getting paid. Like I literally made the audiobook for Bold Saga, and I will literally play the trailer for you right now. So what I will do is get this and I'll get this. And before that, actually, let me just show you what happens when you self-publish. So I'm going to present, share screen. And if you're on YouTube, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So these are the latest books that we just created. You know, we got the Bold Saga audiobook. We got the Please Read With Me A to Z Isi um, Ose edition. It's a coloring book. Amazing Adinkra coloring book. We got the Bold Saga coloring book. I am affirmations and gratitude journal. So that's biblical, that's faith-based. And then we've got Shawnee's Flowers coloring book. All of these are available. They're in pre-order right now, except for the um, audiobook. The audiobook is available right now. So this is the power. I made six books, released all of them in one day because I understand self-publishing and then copywriting and getting it done. Um, brand new Don says, I learned something every time I watch you live. I have so many ideas, brother, still working on my speed. No worries, King. Um, because at the end of the day, speed is important and direction is even more important. As long as you keep moving forward and you make it a decision to get it done, you have to get mad enough to get it done. Make a decision. Get mad. Make a decision, write it down, and then get it done. It will take time, but it's worth it in the end. To release chapter one of this book took 20 months. I went through so much hell. I lost my grandfather. You know, COVID happened. All these type of sadness, like felt like a mental breakdown. Worked on his funeral program, and then through it all, I got it done. Then just releasing the first book, Amazon said you did it wrong. Had to reformat it 24 times. So the goal is don't get caught up in the speed alone. Just make sure you're moving forward. That's what I would encourage you to do. And to anyone watching this, don't let the speed stress you out. Make sure you're getting it done. So the Bold Saga audiobook. This is probably one of the greatest pinnacles I have for self-publishing because when you have an audio book, you can literally change people's lives because they can hear it. They can actually hear your book. So it gives you the ability to speak about what's happening in your book so that it goes into the imagination. So they have to envision it. And if you listen to the audio book while reading the book, oh my, it's incredible. So we literally have the audio book for $29.99 and then the audio book ebook bundle for $31.99. So that's our upsell right there. Again, exponential wealth is accessible when you self-publish. So this is the cover of the audiobook for Bold Saga Chapter 1. This is literally like a manga self-help book or PMA book, Positive Mental Attitude Book. And that's the Brandon Mitchell set of B-Minus TV, the power of self-publishing. You can get access to so many amazing things, man. So this is the trailer. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. And if you're on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. It's Taishin. Thank you so much for joining, King. And if you're on IG and you want to see what the trailer is for the um, Bold Saga audiobook, it's available on our page on at Great Guild um, at Great Guild Co. So on YouTube, this is it.
Oh my. <laughs> this is powerful. And that is the trailer for the Bold Saga audiobook. When you see it, it's phenomenal. I'm going to email you soon for the show as a guest. Thank you so much, King. I'm looking forward to that. I really am. And it's just amazing to me because all these opportunities are opening because of the fact I got it done. And if you're looking for the Bold Saga audiobook, here it is right here. Here's the link. So if you are on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. So that's the link right there. You can check it out. You can see it as well. So I put it there as well as for Facebook if you're watching it there. And if you are on IG, you can just go into the comments or DM the word audiobook and we'll send you the link there as well. So again, I'm just grateful for this opportunity because you just don't know what's on the other side of finishing. Like I remember the first time I finished my first book and I was like, wow, after all these sleepless days and nights, like I remember working to the point like I went to the ER three times because of working on chapter one through four. But one specifically, it was so hard because life will beat you down to get your first book done because once you get one done, I love this. Once you get your first book done, your second book is not that far behind. And once you get your second book done, your third book is not that far behind. And once that's done, your fourth book is on the way. And then the fifth, and then the tenth, and then the fiftieth, and then the hundredth. So it's possible. If you just believe, if you just believe you can get it done, if you just believe it doesn't matter what tries to come against you, you can get it done. So this is the Please Read With Me A through Z Ising Osa edition at the Boston Comics and Color Festival. I spoke to someone who spoke Ising Osa. That was cool, man. That was, oh my God, that was so cool. I wish I could comprehend more of what he's saying because even though I'm learning it, I'm not fluent in it yet. I understand parts of it, but not fluent in it yet. Oh my gosh, so cool. So Isin Elsa is spoken in Bold Saga. It's a Bantu language. It's, it's a tonal language, and it's inside of the Bold Saga series. So letting your young kings and queens learn it today can be very helpful since they say in the next 30 to 40 years, the majority of the world's working force will be in Africa. So learning Isin Elsa is helpful for the future as well as for cultural, you know, empowerment. It's good to know your own culture and see how incredible your own people are. And in addition to that, we have the amazing Adinkra coloring book because we want to show people, kings and queens, how to actually pronounce these Adinkra words like Bahodie, like how to actually pronounce it. You know, a way I rep way, you know, Mate Masie, like actually, how do you pronounce these words and what do they actually mean? Like, what does Dwafe mean? Like, what does Aya actually mean? So, amazing. It's literally amazing. So, all these are available on pre order right now. We got the coloring book for Bold Saga, so you can literally see Masego, um, Boy Pello, Shani, all the amazing characters. You can color them in, draw it, all types of amazing stuff. We also have the I Am Affirmation and Gratitude Journal. So, what that means is that it's a journal, 72 pages, empowering you, literally, because what you speak is what you become. It's so true. Your words have the power to enhance or annihilate your life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. You know, you have to eat the fruit of your words. So what you speak is what you're going to get. If you say, I am exhausted, then that's all you will attract to your life. If you say, I am the head and not the tail. I am victorious. I am wealthy. I am a multimillionaire. I am a first generation millionaire. I'm the first millionaire in my family. Like you speak these things into your life. I am a billionaire. You know, I am accessing wealth every day. You know, I am healthy. That's how you change your life. I don't want to just empower kings and queens among. I'm trying to empower your life. Because at the end of the day, what does it mean to just have all these chapters, but you as a person are not growing? So this is what we're doing with Bold Saga. I am Affirmations and Gratitude Journal, Volume 1. So that's available now. And then the last one, which is fan requested, because every time I go to all these amazing events, one thing is for certain, people love seeing Shawnee as a character with these illustrations. This is from the Shawnee's flower print, and we're going to be uploading this to the store soon, so check that out. We have the Shawnee's flowers coloring book, an entire coloring book just focused on Shawnee with these amazing hand-drawn illustrations. Check it out, man. Like, oh my gosh. It's amazing because you get to therapeutically relax. Art is therapeutic. 
you can get to draw. It's a color. It's a perfect gift for kings. And, well, it's a perfect gift for queens. And I'll have to go, but we'll be in touch. No problem, king. Definitely, man. Have a great night. And honestly, I love it. Because every time I go to these events of um showcasing Bold Saga, keep showing, I keep showing Shawnee. People are like, oh my gosh. I remember the last event at Towson before this one, this queen was like, oh my gosh, I love it. I love seeing her. She's so cool. She's like my favorite character. And I don't even know her yet. So that's the benefit of creating amazing, authentic characters because it resonates with people. Because when you look at Shawnee, there's not no character with no spiky hair. She's not a character that's like, partially melanated and then you know she's really blue or some type of rat or some type of cat or some type of bat but she's actually a queen like a, i remember when i was at towson someone was like can i get that you know photo of that um the african queen i was like who mistake mom you know some other characters i know like, her shawnee so at the end of the day this is the benefit of creating great characters illustrating your work self-publishing again all these stuff are out you as well, King. Have a great night. Thank you so much, King. Keep winning. I'm just excited, man. I'm just excited. And again, another reason why I was excited this weekend is we talked about self-publishing, the highs and the lows, our achievements, and what we have going forward. But also this, they gave us stickers and they gave us pins. So thank you so much, Kings and Queens, for being here. Super excited. And I'll see you on the next time. Until then, keep winning, Kings and Queens.